hi all let's look into the another new topic that is congruences uh, this is very important for one mark questions and if you like my content please do subscribe to my channel let's understand what is meant by congruences let m be a positive integers if a and b are integers uh, we say that a is congruent to b modulo m here m a and b are the positive integers and a is congruent to b modulo m we say this then if m divides a minus b if m di divides a minus b then we call this as a is congruent to b modulo m so m divides a minus b nothing but m the divide symbol is the slash and a minus b and we have some of the note points here first note point is if a is congruent to b modulo m that is denoted by a is congruent to b of mod m mod m nothing but modulo m so a is congruent to b modulo m nothing but a div m divides a minus b and the second note point if m does not divides a minus b then we say that a minus b are incongruent to modulo m so that is denoted by a is incongruent incongruent means not congruent to b of mod m so these are the two statements one is the congruent to modulo m and one is incongruent to modulo m so this denotation is very important then here the integer m is called as the modulo of congruence this m is called the modulo of congruence Uh, these are the some of the examples on congruence topic. Uh, first example, twenty two is congruent to four of uh, four modulo nine. So nothing but we have to check whether twenty two is congruent to four modulo nine or not. So when we compare this with the actual formula, that is a is congruent to b modulo m. When we compare a is equals to twenty two, and uh, b is equals to 4 and m is equals to 9 so we have uh, the formula m divides a minus b so by using this formula we can say whether the given uh, question is congruent or not so m nothing but 9 divides a minus b that is 22 minus 4 so 9 divides for uh, 18 so 9 will divide the 18 so that's why it is congruent Therefore, 22 is congruent to 4 of modulo 9. Then the second example, 3 is congruent to minus 6 of mod 9. So, A is congruent to B of mod M. Then, M divides A minus B. M is 9, A is 3 and B is min uh, minus 6. So, 9 divides 3 minus of B value is minus 6. So, 3 minus of minus 6 becomes 3 plus 6. So, 9 divides 9. So, which is congruent. Therefore, 3 is congruent to minus 6 modulo 9. Then the third example. 13 is congruent to 5 modulo 9. We know that A is congruent to B modulo M. And to check this uh, whether the given question is congruent or not. So, we use the condition M divides A minus B. So, M is 9, A is 13, B is 5. So, A divides uh, A minus, B, M divides A minus B. Nothing but 9 divides 13 minus 5. 13 minus 5 we get it as. Seven. So, we get it as 8. 9 does not divide the. 8 so we say it as it is incongruent therefore we write it as 13 is not congruent to 5 modulo m so to represent it we write it as 13 is incongruent to 5 modulo 9 so this is the final statement then the fourth example 25 is congruent to 4 modulo 8 or not so, we know that A is congruent to B modulo M and M 
divides a minus b. This is a condition. M is 8, a is 25, b is 4. So, 8 divides 25 minus 4. So, that equals to 8 divides 21. So, 8 does not divide the 21. We can represent it like this. So, this is incongruence because 8 does not divide the 21. So, 25 is incongruent to 4 modulo 8. So, in this way, we will check whether the given question is congruent or not. So, this can, this such type of questions can be asked as a one mark. First, we have to check the condition. Does M divides A minus B or not? If it divides, then it is congruence. If it does not divide, then it is incongruence. Uh, let's see the sum of the properties which are applicable on the congruences. Let M be a positive integer. Congruence modulo M. Nothing but mod m which satisfies the following properties. So, m is a positive integer and mod m is the congruence uh, modulo m. This satisfies the some of the following properties. Let's see what are those properties. The first one is reflexive property. If a is an integer, then a is congruent to a modulo m. So, this is the reflexive property. a is an integer. Then a is congruent to a modulo m. And symmetric property. If a and b are integers such that a is congruent to b modulo m. Then b is also congruent to a modulo m. Some of the properties we know. A, if a is equals to b. Then b is equals to a. The same when we apply in the congruence topic. A is, if a is congruent to b modulo m. Then b is also congruent to a modulo m. So, this is a symmetric property. Then the third property is transitive property. If a, b, c are integers such that a is congruent to b modulo m and b is congruent to c modulo m then a is also congruent to c modulo m. So, transitive we know that if a is equals to b and b is equals to c. So, indirectly we are saying that a is equals to c. The same when we apply in the congruence topic, A is congruent to B modulo M and B is congruent to C modulo M. Then we can say that A is also congruent to C modulo M. And here A, B, C are the integers. So this is the transitive properties and these are the three properties which we can apply on the congruence topic. Uh, let's see three note points here. First note point is let a, b, a and B belongs to Z. Nothing but they are belongs to integers. And M belongs to Z plus. So Z plus nothing but only positive integers. So it does not include the negative integers. So M belongs to only positive integers. And A and B belongs to integers. It means A and B can be the negative values as well as positive values. But M should be only positive integers. Then A is congruent to B modulo M. So this implies A of mod M is equals to B of mod M. So this can also be written as A modulo M is also congruent to B modulo M. So when this all conditions should satisfy, whenever A is congruent to B modulo M, we can also write it as A modulo M is congruent to B modulo M. The second note point, if A, B, C are belongs to Z, nothing but A, B, C are belongs to the integers and M is only belong to the positive integers with M greater than 0. It means it does not include the 0. So when we say the positive integers, it starts from the 0, 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on up to N numbers. But here we are saying that M is greater than 0. If it is m greater than or equal to 0, then 0 also includes. But they give the condition that m is greater than 0. It means the 0 does not include. It means it only starts from the number 1. Such that a is congruent to b modulo m. So if this all satisfies and the condition a is congruent to b modulo m, then it satisfies these three statements. The first statement is a plus C is congruent to B plus C modulo M. So on both sides we are adding C. Even though when we add C, 
their cong it will be congruent to each other that is a plus c is congruent to b plus c modulo m and the second statement is a minus c is congruent to b minus c modulo m so when you look at here to this statement we are adding c even though it will be congruent when we subtract the c uh, when we subtract the c that is a minus c is congruent to b minus c modulo m then also this both left hand side and right hand side will be congruent to each other and finally the third statement states that a into c is congruent to b into c modulo m so when we multiply the c with on both sides then also the it will be congruent to each other so when it happens when m is positive integers and a b c are integers and m must be greater than 0 so then only these three statements will be applicable so this is a note point second and third one if a b k belongs to z and m is integers such that k is greater than 0 and m is also greater than 0 so here a b and this k is also belong to z m is a integer such that m does not include 0 it starts from the 1 and k also does not include the 0 but it includes all the negative values and positive values because here we have say, uh, said that k belongs to z it belongs to the integers it means it can be negative integers as well as positive integers but it does not include the 0 and it should be always greater than 0 nothing but uh, it can it should have only positive number so a is congruent to b modulo m then we say that a power k is congruent to b now power k modulo m so right here k is belongs to only positive integers it does not belongs to all the uh, negative and positive integers note this so a is congruent to b modulo m then we say that a power k uh, is congruent to b power k modulo m so when we are doing the power of the k on the both sides but it is not equals to 0 and it should be always positive even if it is negative also it will be congruent so when then also it, these two right hand side and left hand side will be congruent to each other so these three are the very important note points which we will also apply in the problems let's solve some of the problems on this uh, for each of the these pairs of integer pair of integers determine whether they are congruent to modulo m7 or not so for all these questions the modulo 7 is same but the integers are given nothing but a value is given b value is also given so here a is equals to 15 b is equals to 1 and mod m nothing but m is the 7 here so m is equals to 7 and remember one thing a should whenever these two uh, integers are given you will be confused what you take the value of a and b so always remember that a value should be greater than the other value so among these two the greatest one is 15 so we have to take a value as 15 and the remaining one we have to take it for the b value so a is equals to 15 and b is equals to 1 and m is 7 so therefore m is mod m nothing but mod 7 they given it in the question so when we compare these two m is 7 so therefore the value of m is 7 and this point here a should all should be always greater number so among these two numbers a value should be always the greater one we know that to check the congruent uh, we have to check whether it is congruent or not so to check that we have one condition m divides a minus b so if m divides a minus b then we say that a is congruent to b modulo m this statement we have seen at the starting so the same when we apply to this question m is 7 divides a is 15 and b is 1 so 15 minus 1 so that equals to 7 divides 15 minus 1 is 14 so 7 is, will divide the 14 so therefore this is congruent to modulo 7 so 1 15 are 1 comma 15 are congruent to modulo 7 so that is 15 is congruent to 1 modulo m so it finally we have to write the value in this form so a is congruent to b modulo m 
whatever the values we have taken here that we should replace at the last so 15 is congruent to 1 modulo 7 so this is the main condition to check so remember only this condition if m divides a minus b then a is congruent to b modulo m so this is the first one and the second one minus 9 comma 5 so among these two numbers the value with the greater one is 5 so positive numbers are always greater than the negative so therefore the a value we have to take it as 5 and the b value is minus 9 and we have seen the question m modulo 7 is applicable for all the given below questions so m is equal to 7 the same statement we know that if m divides a minus b then a is congruent to b modulo m so m 7 divides 9 minus of minus 5 so b value is minus 9 and 7 divides 5 minus of minus 9 is equals to 7 divides 5 minus into minus is plus 9 so that is same 7 divides 9 plus 5 is 14 therefore minus 9 comma 5 are congruent to modulo 7 so 7 divides 14 so therefore minus 9 and 5 are the congruent to modulo 7 so that is when we write it as a state final statement 5 is congruent to minus 9 modulo 7 so we have substituted the values in this form and we have written at the last 5 is congruent to minus 9 modulo 7 the third one minus 1 comma 8 so a is equals to 8 and b is equals to minus 1 because a is the greater than minus 1 8 is greater than minus 1 so m is equals to 7 so we know that if m divides a minus b then a is congruent to b modulo m so 7 divides 8 minus of minus 1 so that equals to 7 divides 8 plus 1 so 7 divides 9 so this it does not divide the 9 7 does not divide 9 so therefore minus 1 comma 8 are incongruent to modulo 7 so when we write it in the statement when we replace all the values here 8 is incongruent to minus 1 modulo 7 nothing but it is not congruent to minus 1 modulo 7 and the fourth one which is the final question on this congruence topic uh, the 0 comma 42 so 42 is greater so a is equals to 42 and b is equals to 0 m is equals to 7 so we know that if m divides a minus b then a is congruent to b modulo m so m divides so 7 divides 42 minus 0 so 7 divides 42 yes the 7 divides 42 7 6 of 42 so therefore 0 comma 42 are congruent to modulo 7 so that is uh, 42 is congruent to 0 modulo 7 so this uh, in this way we will solve the uh, congruences questions